candidates for uh, this paper need to make sure that they are comfortable with the principles of uh, discounted cash flow. Um, let's start with the uh, distinction between simple and uh, compound interest. Be sure that um, one can make the uh, calculations necessary to apply simple interest to a sum of money. Simple interest would be, for example, if we had $100 um, on deposit and we would earn $5 per annum on that $100. The compound interest would be if the $5 of, of interest is added to the principal amount and the new interest calculation is done on the increased amount. In this case, if interest were payable semi-annually, for example, then we would be saying that the $100 would attract 5% interest up until the middle of the year. And then for the second half of the year, the interest would be based on a larger sum of money and would accumulate to a total interest amount of $5.06 a little bit more than six cents, uh, which would be calculated as one can see here. Okay, so that's that's pretty basic, the distinction between simple compound interest. Next thing we want to keep in mind is uh, the distinction between nominal and effective um, interest rates. So in the example before, the nominal interest rate uh, that was applied was 5%, but in fact what the a uh, depositor was earning was an effective interest rate of 5.0625% because of the compounding effect. Now, when we talk about um, discounting of cash flows, what we're saying uh, effectively is that value is based on receiving cash. Everybody likes to receive cash, and the quicker we receive it, the better off we are. In other words, a dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received tomorrow. So we're going to use cash as our basis of determining value and also the timing of cash is going to be very important because of the timing of receipts and the timing of expenditures of cash. Let's look at the uh, compounding effect here and the discounting effect and, and how that ties together. When we take a present value, let's say $100, and we compound it into the future, that's the same way, that's the same thing as saying we want to um, increase the amount of dollars by multiplying it with some interest rate. If the interest rate, for example, was 5% per annum, based on the $100, then the value of our $100 after one year will be $105. That's simply 100 times 1.05 to give us 105 in year one. This process can be repeated for the next year. If we take the $105 and we multiply it again going forward by 1.05, we will receive after two years, $110.25, and so it accumulates this way. Now that's simple going, or straightforward going forward from $100 to $105, and ultimately to $110.25. Suppose we were, would turn the, the situation around and say that if one were to receive in two years' time $110.25. How could we relate this back to the $100 present value? Instead of multiplying forward by 1.05, we would have to divide this number by 1.05, in this case two times, to get back from year two until the present. And so the discounting process is a reversal of the compounding process. These are the formulas here, but of course, it all becomes much more understandable if we were to uh, 
use a simple um, numerical example and say, okay, if we receive $100 after two years and we want to discount that $100 at an interest rate of 10%, what we're saying basically is that here's year zero, that's today. Here's year one, here's year two, and we receive $100 in two years. What is that equal to in present value terms? What we need to do is if we know that the discount rate or the interest rate is 10% that's applicable in this situation, we will take 100 and divide it by 1.1. So divide by 1.1 and the result would mean that in one year's time, $100 is worth $90.91. We discount this again now to a present value. So we divide again by 1.1. And we receive $82.64. This becomes the present value. You can see here, applying the formula, 100 divided by 1.1 to the power 2. And if you're not sure if this is really the right answer, then just turn the whole process around and say, if I start today with $82.64 and I invest it for one year at 10%, then after one year, 1.1 times 82.64 is equal to 90.91. If I invest it again going forward, multiplying it by 1.1, I receive ultimately $100 in two years' time. So going forwards or coming back, it's the, the endpoints are the same. Good. Now this is very this discounting process is very important. Why is it important? Because it allows us now to discount future cash flows and to, to adjust them for the time difference and the time delay in receiving money. And we can re relate it all back to a present value. Let's look at a case. Suppose we were to receive in the future, after one year, $100, after two years, $100, then $125, $105, and $140. And the discount rate is 10%. We can discount each of these values back to a present value by dividing by 1.1 raised to the power corresponding to the year in which the cash is going to be received. If we look in year four, for example, this $105 has to be discounted at 1.1 to the power four. And we can see here, therefore, the present values for each of those cash flows are expressed in, in this line down here. And together we can say that those present values are equal to holding $426 in today's money. So, for investment appraisal and for a, a, a variety of managerial decisions, this is a very a useful kind of calculations to make. Now, there's another um, uh, thing that we should mention here in calculating the present values. If we have the fortunate situation where all the cash flows are equal to each other in the future, this is what we call an annuity. And an annuity can be very easily um, calculated into its present value by looking at a kind of uh, mathematical table which is provided um, uh, from any, any, any uh, financial sources uh, which would give one the annuity factor, that would be the amount, the factor by which we have to multiply a the, the annuity amount of $100. In this case, the annuity factor corresponding to a 10% uh, discount rate covering five years of cash flows would be 3.79. 3.79 times 100 would equal 379 present value of these cash flows. Um, if you don't have annuity tables, then you can do the whole process manually as is done here. Take each cash flow and calculate it to its present value 
add those present values together, and one gets 379.